Okay, today we're going to be looking at temporary joining methods. Uh, and this is part of your Edexcel GCSE resistant materials exam. The things that you need to know for your GCSE is that first of all, there are two types of joining methods. There are temporary joining methods and there are permanent joining methods and that's on your screen now. Today we're going to look at temporary joining methods, uh, first of all. A temporary joining method is when two or more pieces of material are joined together, but the key thing is, is that they can be taken apart, okay? And the joining method can be taken apart without damaging that material. So we're looking at things like screws and nuts and bolts, things that can screw apart and take the material apart without damaging the material. On the other hand, a permanent joining method is something that joins two materials together permanently, fixed forever. Now, nothing will be fixed forever. For example, if I made a joint that was permanent and pulled it apart, I could break it and take that joint apart, but I would damage the material, I'd break the material. That's what makes it a permanent method. So a temporary joining uh, method is when you can take something apart without damaging the material, and a permanent joining method is when you can take something apart, but it will damage the material. What we're looking for today are four temporary joining methods. Uh, the four temporary joining methods are this. Uh, we're going to start off with knockdown fittings, uh, nuts, bolts and washers, and we're going to look at screws. But we're also going to look at the process uh, called tapping and threading. Now tapping and threading is a process uh, that creates the screw thread, the spiral screw thread that are on nuts, bolts and washers and on screws. It's a very important process that creates that thread that allows something to be screwed on or screwed off. So these are the four that you need to know for your exam. Uh, if we start off with screws, now screws come in lots of different shapes and sizes. Um, the differences are with the the head of the screw, the different shapes of the head of the screw, as well as the top of the screw where you would put your screwdriver. If we look at the top of the screw to start with on the bottom left of your screen, you would see that there are two main two main tops of screws that we need to know, and that is the slotted and the Phillips. And they obviously join with certain screwdrivers, the slotted screwdriver. Uh, or the Phillips screwdriver which is the little cross. Obviously only a certain screwdriver fits with a certain screw so it's very important to choose the correct one. And if we look at the types of screw heads there are lots of different ones. In general though they fit into two categories. Ones that protrude, that come out of the material and ones that lie flush or lie flat with the material. As you can see the pan, the dome, the round, the truss and the oval will all come out of the material. We all see it and you'll be able to feel it on top of the material. Whereas the flat screw, I call it the countersink screw, would sit flush. You could run your hand across it and there wouldn't be a bump. To do that, you would obviously need to drill a hole uh, and you would have to use a countersink bit which is on the top right of your screen. That countersink bit will cut the V shape in the top of your piece of material, your top of your piece of wood, which would allow that screw head to sit flat in the material. It's also really important to note that you can only use screws on wood. They can't be used on metal or plastic. They aren't able to be screwed. And what it does, it holds those two elements together and the screw doesn't come out of the other end. So it would go through one material, it would go through all the way through one piece of material and then into the second material that they are getting joined together with and it will screw and tighten, that thread will tighten and tighten as you screw it, those two pieces of material together. Really important that you know that they can be used on wood only and that they will join the two pieces together without coming out of the other end. If we move now on to nuts, bolts and washers, again another really common and really obvious way to join material. Now the difference with nuts, bolts and washers as opposed to screws is that these can be used on metals and plastics. It does exactly the same thing, it joins two pieces of material together, but this time it's used on materials that can't directly take a screw thread, it can't directly be screwed. So what has to happen is those two bits of material, the pieces of metal, the piece of plastic that you're joining together, 
They have to already have a hole drilled in them. They already have to have a hole drilled in them. And what you do then is you will place the bolt through the hole and screw the nut on and tighten it and tighten it and tighten it. Sometimes having to use a wrench or a spanner and you'll tighten that uh, nut into the material until it kind of clamps the two bits of material together. The washers are there to be placed on either side of the material to stop the material being damaged by the pressure that the nut is exerting on it when it's being screwed together. So that can be used on woods and metal. Sorry, not woods. That can be used on plastics and metals. Or it can be used to join a combination of dissimilar materials. If we now go back to thinking about the screw thread, so the spiral thread that is on a nut, on a bolt, and on a, on a screw, that is done through tapping and threading. On your screen at the top are the two different tools used to create the screw thread. What we must understand is that on a nut and a bolt, there is a screw thread on the outside of the bolt, on the outside of the bolt, but there's also a corresponding thread, a corresponding spiral thread on the inside of the nut. And those two threads join together and that's why the nut can spin onto the bolt. At the top is a tap. And that tap is used to create the internal screw thread in a nut. It's placed in a bracket and is twisted into an already drilled hole. That's really important. That you have to have already drilled the hole, a clean hole. And that tap is put into the hole and twisted around it. And the, the textures, the, the, the pattern on the tap will cut that thread into the hole. That will have to be done multiple times, going backwards and forwards, so that you will remove the material that you're cutting out, and that is called swarf. The material that's coming out of the hole as you're cutting the thread is called swarf. Usually, people that are doing uh, creating the thread with the tap will go three quarters of a turn forwards and then come back a quarter of a turn. And what that'll do, it'll create a nice, uh, a nice loose thread that will spin easily so that you can get your screw or your nut straight into it. On the bottom left, the round tool, that is a die, and the die does the opposite. The die cuts the screw thread on the external area of a bolt, so on the outside. And what happens is, that is put into a bracket that can be twisted, and the metal rod that will become the bolt is placed in the gap, and the die is turned and turned and turned around it, again going forwards and backwards to loosen it up and to remove that swath. And it will cut the external thread on the bolt. And if done properly, the thread that you have used with the, the thread that you have cut with the tap, the internal thread, and the thread that you have used with the die, the external thread, will match up perfectly and you've got a nice nut and bolt, you've got a nice thread that's been cut. That is a really, really important process because that allows us to create a temporary fixing that we can use to join materials with. The last temporary fixing that we've got to look at is a knockdown fitting. Now, a knockdown fitting is a different kind of a different kind of fixing because it's something that we don't create but it is already there on a lot of furniture that we buy you might look at them and see them being really familiar to you and that's because if you've ever bought flat pack furniture from ikea these fittings will already be on all of the pieces of that furniture they're typically used to join all of the bits of flat pack furniture together to create your wardrobe or your bed or your shelves and it's really easy because it's just two pieces of plastic stuck on the sides of the bits of wood, the parts of your furniture, that are joined together with screws. Now the screws do not go into the wood. The screw joins the plastic fittings together.
the screws join the plastic fittings together. What that does, it allows the user to be able to take their flat pack furniture from IKEA, put it in their car, drive it home, and assemble it at home. Which means it's really quick to assemble, it's really easy, all you need is a screwdriver. Which then means that IKEA do not have to pay for delivery, they don't have to assemble it themselves, which allows them to create very cheap products. And as well as that, allows them to sell them cheaply. We also have to think about environmental effects. We're not paying for delivery, are we? We're not paying uh, more money for people to come into our houses and create it for us. So then the environmental effect of the vans and the petrol being used isn't there. So it's massive advantages there is that it saves money, it saves time. Okay, we are saving costs. But on the negative side, these fittings, um, these fittings, the corner block, the scan fitting and the cam fitting, all used to join flat pack furniture together. They're not very durable. They're obviously just made of little bits of plastic and the pieces of material uh, that create the actual furniture are not joined. They're not glued and they've not got any surface area connecting, which means it's quite weak. As well as that, they don't look very aesthetically pleasing. Uh, that's why they're cheap. If you were going to pay a lot of money, I would expect a really nice handcrafted bit of furniture put together really nicely with joints. So they're the disadvantages for knockdown fittings. But the most important thing that you take away from knockdown fittings is that they are used to join flat pack pieces of furniture you can assemble at home by yourself. It makes it easy and cheaper to make. Okay, so that is all of our temporary fittings. They should be really simple and really, really easy to understand.